Welcome, Welcome to another episode of Driving to the Race. <laughs> That's Larry's attempt at a jingle. <laughs> With your favorite hosts, Larry and Inelia. <laughs> we really need to work on our musical I mean, jingle abilities. It's a, it was your present. I know. You haven't spent it's any very time nice. practicing. Oh, that's better. <laughs> that See? was my attempt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But my th my idea of driving to the rest jingle is not some ding-a-ling-a-ling-a-ling. -a well, I know. I'll just try and It's like I mean, try something. Doom, 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 Hey, Larry's so cool. Hey, 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 Larry's so cool. <laughs> okay. Okay. I'll be, I'll be, I'll, I'll be okay with that one. <laughs> So what are we talking about today, honey? Today is uh, an interesting topic. Oh, yeah? Yeah. What is it? Well, honestly, one of the things that I was uh, grasping my attention this morning mm -hmm. was sound healing. Sound healing. Yeah, sound healing. PB's healing the sounds. Uh, it's time for... Uh... Pee -pee! Pee -pee! <laughs> <laughs> What did you come here? The sounds over here, honey. Come here. You want to go outside? You want to go outside? Yeah. Go chase monsters? Oh, no. Come here. Good girl. Come on. So sound healing. Sound. Yeah. Uh, have you ever had a sound healing session? Mm, not specifically because I never, you know, of course need healing. <laughs> Except when I'm actually feeling terrible. And then you don't go anywhere. And then I don't, you know, yeah. accept too much help in. I know, yeah. So, it happens. a sound healing session eh, might be interesting. I have been in, um, I have been in uh, sessions where I've seen it happening. And mm. I've been in sessions where I've, um, where it's said that that's what's going on. It's like, you know, the crystal bowl singer, mm -hmm. Om, Om mm -hmm. Shaman. Yeah. Yeah. Him. yeah, yeah, yeah. He would have those, those sessions, and you know, people often would experience things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I agree. It's um, I went to have a reading once uh, with uh, a guy in um, Reno, in California, and um, do you remember his name? The crystal Tim one, Timothy. Tim Tim Glenn, I think. Tim Timothy, Timothy Glenn. Glenn. Yeah, I think so. I think that's what his name is. Yeah. And um, yeah, he confused me a little bit because he was a very good comedian and channeler yes. and sound healer. Yes. <laughs> like okay, that's a lot of hats. Yeah, but he did the reading, mm -hmm. and then when he saw my numbers, he said, "Oh my God, you know, you're gonna do this and this and that. You came for here for this, for this and that." And I said, "Oh, okay." <laughs> uh, this was before I went public, and right. um, and. I was like, eh, you know, kind of when you look at your future and you think, mm, I don't really want that. <laughs> I don't want that, thank you. <clears throat> but anyways, <laughs> apart from that, he said, I, I have to show you something. Okay. So he took me to the room next door and he had all these bowls, crystal bowls and things. And then he said, watch this. And he started playing the bowls and also singing at the same time. Mm -hmm. And suddenly we weren't in that room. We were in a different dimension, in a more um, like higher frequency dimension that was more pliable and more empowered. And I'm like, holy smokes, how did you do that? And he looks at me laughing, like really, really happy. He said, yeah. You can see it, right? You can see it, right? And I said, yes, where, where are we? And he called it the fourth dimension. Nice. And he said, um, I do sound healing. And what I actually do, he said, is I take people into the fourth dimension where they are more empowered and, and the capacity to manipulate matter and, and reality is more subtle. So all they do is like with that wanting to get better, they go into a more subtle reality, they get better hmm. and they bring that better back. Something like that. I mean, I'm, right, that I'm, makes sense to me because... That's how I understood what he was saying to me. <clears throat> Excuse me. But it was amazing. And, you know, we were talking <clears throat> in, um, we we're talking all about 
uh, or you know, I've written the homeworks for Walk With Me Now in the Future, yeah, yeah. and talking about empirical evidence and what exactly is that, right? Empirical evidence is when you uh, sense something, observe something with your senses, mm -hmm. right, with your uh, five senses, and that was to me empirical evidence because I, I you sensed had that it. experience. Yeah. Yeah. So the sound healing aspect. It was so amazing. Um, the other sound experiences that I've had uh, growing up, there was always music in my house. Always music in my house. And by that I mean we were always playing music. There was always music playing. But also we had a musical group and we would play music. We would play instruments. Um, when I was very small, there was a piano in my house and there was a, a record player I mean if you're really old you'll know what a record player is <laughs> um, these days kids don't know what that is but it's like the thing that you play uh, you put a, a vinyl record thing on and put a little needle on it and it plays music so there was always that in the background playing music and it was mostly either classical music or the Beatles <laughs> that, which was what my parents liked mm -hmm. If the record player wasn't playing, the radio was on with music all the time. <clears throat> and then as I grew older, of course, you know, we had um, cassette players and things like that. So we were always playing music. And then in our house in England, um, there was like a room full of instruments. And whenever there was a party or a ga gathering, which my mum loved to have every week, people would bring out the instruments and we'd just play music for a while. And it seemed to transform things. It, it, it brought people out of their I me and myself because <clears throat> we didn't have many divas. <laughs> mm -hmm. You had to do it as a group, right? Right. And there's a lot of people who don't know how to play instruments. So we had instruments that they could play, like maracas and bells and, um, and um, bongos, you know. Right. Ones that just don't take a lot of... Tone. Exactly, yeah, yeah. And we would just play, and there was three or four uh, professional musicians in our um, community, and they would pretty much, you know, lead the way. <laughs> My mom always loved to play the guitar as well and sing. Anyways, so there was always music, so that was a form. This was people who had been tortured, exiled, and they were refugees. They, no, I mean, most of them, not all of them, but there was a lot of hurt. And it felt to me that during those times, that hurt went away, even if it was like for an hour or two. Mm -hmm. And it gave a respite, you know. Give you a break. Yeah, it gave you a break. A break from this real. Yeah. Or the real that they were experiencing. Anyway. Yes, yeah. And and but I remember... It like connection too, right? Yes, connection, yeah. You have to connect in order to play with other people. And then, of course, I I started learning how to play the classical guitar, and um, I used to. I used, it used to be a really strange experience for me, mm -hmm. because it, I would grab the guitar and I'd start playing, even if it was just practicing your, your scales up and down. And I would feel the notes coming right through me, but it felt like from source. And I remember once I was in the living room. And I started playing the scales, so practicing, I had to practice the scales, let's say half an hour, and then one or two pieces after that, right? Mm -hmm. So I closed my eyes, <clears throat> and I started doing the scales, and I would bring in these sounds, and I would feel each note in my entire body, and it was like, it was beautiful, and I could feel the light emanating from the, the, each tone, each, each, each string, and these scales, you know? And then I finished the scales, I'm thinking, ah, yeah, it must have been like half an hour or so. I opened my eyes, and there were people there, like friends, and I think my mom was there. They were sitting around watching me play the scales. Mm -hmm. And they were like, to their eyes were totally altered state, right? Mm -hmm. And one of them said, oh, no, 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 don't stop, don't stop. And I'm like, oh, would you like me to play something? We don't care what you play, just do something, <laughs> play something. And I was like, that is very strange. That is a very strange experience. Um, and then it started happening over and over again. And then even my neighbor said that when she heard me 
practicing. I would practice like six o'clock in the morning for a couple of hours before going to school. And then at night when I came back and I got another couple of hours, I was really, really intensely obsessed with, with playing the guitar, actually obsessed. And um, she, would tell, she would tell me, oh, yeah, I love it when you practice, you know. And at another time, I remember um, we had, because of all these musicians, we, we formed a group um, playing um, Chilean music, uh, Latin, you know, mostly. It's a mix of native and classical music, like, like Western music. Uh, it's a really good mix. So there's several groups in South America started playing it, or groups that were formed by many different countries. And um, and we would play those songs. So sometimes I would just uh, be at home with the mics and stuff, and I would just start voicing, you know. Mm-hmm. And I would start singing the songs, and or just playing with the voice, and then some of the instruments and things. And and the again the neighbor, you know, she would see me in the garden sometimes. Oh, I was listening to you this morning. It's so beautiful. I just had to sit and listen and to me it felt like and I've seen it in people you know I've seen how some people are stuck with how well can I play and will Mm -hmm. people like me Mm -hmm. and that doesn't do much I mean sometimes it's beautiful but that's it but I've seen other people and very 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 talented people who continued with that obsession right Mm -hmm. Uh, to professional levels and I remember what used to happen to me and it was like, whether it was my voice or the guitar what, or other instrument, because I, I would grab any instrument and I could play music through it. Because what what was it? How did I look at it? Or how did I experience it? I used to experience it like there was a voice, that the guitar had a voice, the violin had a voice, the flute had a voice, the recorder, you know, kids the recorder had a voice. And what you were doing was to help it express that voice and that also had was my body my mm-hmm. body had a voice and what i was doing was to allow it to express that voice in a in and that voice used to bring in the divine to me at the time i didn't know i didn't believe in god i don't believe in god now not in the western christian manner of god but i know that all is sentient and I know that all is eternal and that we are divine eternal beings. So it was that energy that I would kind of tap into and, and bring through. the. It's almost like the instrument, whether it's your body, your voice, or whether it's the guitar or the violin, wanted to speak, wanted to sing that, that energy. So that's what I would try and do. And I would play with the sounds until it was right. It was bringing it in. And then somebody told me, they said, hey, did you know what Beethoven believed in when he created music? And I said, no, I don't. They said his, his generation of musicians, what they used to do, but particularly him, was to bring God into the earth through his music. Hmm. And I was like, oh, my God, that's, it. that's exactly right. That's exactly what it is, mm-hmm. right? That's exactly what I've been doing. And then I understood why I liked his music so much, right? So that to me is like that. that's what sound healing is. That you bring in that divine energy, that source energy through voice or through an instrument or a bell or something and you bring it here, which of course was a completely different experience that, than I had with Timothy Glenn, mm-hmm. right? Because he literally took us into a different dimension. So that was different. It's kind of what Tom Tom Kenyon was doing, too. Remember the boy who sang the world? Whatever. Yeah. yeah. He was similarly bringing you to a different world or something. Because my experience with him was going somewhere else and oh, seeing okay. the geometries of the reality, yeah. underlining the reality, which that's one of the sound healing type things I was looking at going tomorrow. I remember Stellar Fairborn's, her music we were listening to quite a while. Stellar. Oh, yes, yeah. yes, we love Stellar. One of her friends is uh, having a event, kind of a thing tomorrow. Oh, lovely. So I'm going to check it out and see what nice. it's about. And he did the go to the pyramids with the somatics. Mm-hmm. He, I don't know if he invented the somatics, but he invented a, a process mm-hmm. called a cymoscope or something like that. Mm-hmm. 
and the geometries that I see on those cymoscopes is the same ones that I used to see in my head, but in Can you explain to people what a cymoscope is? Well, it sh gives you a visual representation of the sound uh, frequency. Mm -hmm. We had those, a couple of them, remember? We do. We one have. of them uses liquid, kind of, and it mm. makes like a Water. 3D form, yeah. and the other one uses um, sand. dust, sand, yeah. sandy dust. Yeah. They're fun, interesting to look at, but um, it's like, in my mind, it, it understands this tone that, it, you know, when you're looking at the dust, it's like all blurry, 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 and then it goes, and it snaps into focus, and wherever mm -hmm. it snaps into focus, it feels like that is transmitting a reality of some kind, you know? It can transmit a reality, or it can bring in an energy. I think it very much depends on the artist, mm -hmm. right? And the intent behind it. And of course we have the exploitation of sound and music for purposes of power over others, right? And the, the popular music or whatever, mostly is what they're giving out is um, low frequency, feelings and energies, but also a lot of the modern artists that have become famous are very much stuck on the I, me and myself, and their music just puts out love me, like me, right? I want you to love me and like me, I need for you to love me and like me, mm. that type of energy. And so music and sound doesn't just heal, it can also harm. But I think the intent behind each one by the person, by the musician, really, really affects what the experience is for the audience. So yeah, it can take you somewhere, right? Or it can bring something in. And yeah, it can take you somewhere very beautiful, or it can take you somewhere very nasty. Or it can bring in beautiful, it can bring in nasty. Hmm. The sound, yeah. Interesting. <clears throat> <laughs> Can you hear it? <laughs> so what do you think? Well, I think I think that the sound I think sound definitely most definitely when you're feeling a thing that you don't want to feel, mm -hmm. you can definitely use sounds, even the musics, as a way to maneuver your emotions to a different place. Yes, so sure. Absolutely. I mean, feeling down on the outs, you can put on happy music and the kind mm -hmm. of music that makes you feel better, and you will feel better. Better. That's a that's a sound healing in itself, right? Yeah, yeah. And you can. Uh, I I've found though, sounds and songs that make some people feel better don't make me feel better. Yeah, yeah, that's true. But it makes too. them feel a lot better. Yeah. And yeah. you would think that it would be a universal thing. It isn't, though. But it totally isn't. Mm -hmm. So, do you think the, um, like the experience you had with Timothy Glenn, where his intent was to bring you to a different dimension of place, uh -huh. right? Through uh, entrainment in the sound, I suppose. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure. It's just like the vehicle that he used to be able to conceptualize yes. it, doing it. And he did it. Do you think everyone will have the same transported to experience or they would experience it differently I depending think, on their openness or something? I think that he knew that I would see what he was actually doing, mm -hmm. but I got the feeling that he was so excited to show me that because most people didn't, didn't perceive see, it. They didn't purpose. quite see what was happening. They might or might not even have an experience. Right. And right. if they did have an experience, they wouldn't be able, they wouldn't be able to verbalize or they that. would experience it, or they would, they would usually project the authority and say, thank you, oh, he did it. Tim, for fixing my whatevers, right? Ah, uh, yeah, I see. They wouldn't quite understand what had happened. In, in their reality, they would make it a, give it an explanation. That it's the Praetorians channeling through his Whatever. music, fixing yeah. me and uh, yeah. Yeah. healing me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I see what you're saying. The yeah. Praetorians were his uh, channeled. Friends. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, uh, one of the other things, though, a lot of people here in our community are getting very interested in um, tuning fork healing. Right, definitely. 
Mm -hmm. And uh, we have Fred here who actually got the whole set, and there's a lady who class. teaches it. Yeah, he took a class with her. Yeah, and there's a lady who teaches it um, online, and um, we played around with them. It was hilarious. It, there was a lot of... We broke all the rules. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, it was, it was quite interesting, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. It hasn't stuck as a thing that we use a lot of. No. But every night we do use sound, uh, a sound healing in a sense. Yeah. Because we play the same music. Music. Yeah, to go to sleep. When yeah. we go to sleep or when we're laying down. And mm -hmm. it's, uh, I don't know if it has a name. <laughs> well, it's an author, um, Craig Press. Um, oh, it's Craig Press. Yes. Album. Yep. Craig Perks, uh, he's a musician. Producer and musician. And, uh, yeah, yeah pr producer, musician, and he uh, collaborates with other singers and artists to create music. Now, some of his albums are, I can't really listen to, but there are some that are actually extremely high frequency. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> knocked out of the ballpark yes, with that. Yes, knocked out of, yeah. Yeah, the totally. park. And that's the ones that I like to listen to at night because they bring you back, or at least the experience that I have is they bring me back to remembering the frequency that is more real than the one that we have during the day. Mm -hmm. um, and that's why I like to go to sleep to that music. Right? right. Um, the experience is... To me, um, the experience would be um, during the night, you know, I have mm -hmm. dreams. I, a lot of the time I have nightmares and things like that. And they bring certain frequencies and energies in that keep me in a, to me, what is a very low frequency state. Your nightmares? Not necessarily, but it's like importances as well and oh. things like that, you know. Um, and then during the day, we have an experience of life, at least I do, that to me is extremely low frequency. Mm -hmm. To me, right? Mm -hmm. uh, what, do the, do, what do I mean by that? It means that there are chicken scratches, importances, things, um, are a co-creation on the planet that is mostly at a larger scale, power over others. Here, a community scale is not power over others, um, but there's always, uh, to me, a, a soup of egoic uh, realities and games and plays. Now, I have to qualify this statement by saying that compared, if we were to compare to other realities around the planet, uh, if if I change the, the comparison note, frequency, it is an extremely high frequency experience on the planet. Everybody here that I interact with on a daily basis is awake, aware, interested and interesting. And very rarely do they fall into deep egoic games. Right? They're emotionally healthy individuals. And it's a joy to have this experience of life with everybody who's in my life right now, right? including my puppies and kittens mm -hmm. and whatever, right? I'm talking mostly about people. And your chickens, even. Yeah. So what I'm saying by extremely low frequency, it is because my naturalist, natural state is not even singular. My natural, where I feel comfortable, is not an egoic construct or a singular construct. And for me, what is important, for example, are the frequencies of the planet, mm -hmm. right? And what that looks like, and it's it's beautiful. It's like an, an like an orchestra playing music. Like we're talking about sounds, right? Right. And there is no judgment in the music that's being played. It's just music. And I see that there's colors and frequencies that are not natural to this reality and to this world. Um, and that's why we're here. We're here to tune up this reality construct. So it, from the level of that, of, 
level of awareness and the frequency uh, not getting not being about oh you know what does Inelia want right now mm -hmm. oh my gosh you know I have to eat breakfast because my body's hungry <laughs> or I have to um I have a headache or oh I want to go to the beach oh that's so funny let's laugh you know it's almost um from the different perspectives that I look at it the frequencies that play around and I understand that in order to deliver the message of empowerment to people and to be able to to do that, I have to be alive here on this planet. Mm -hmm. Once you die, you can't influence the physical plane, period. Unless you possess another person and then it, it's never pretty, mm. right? And you're still, you're still back on the planet because <laughs> yeah. you're possessing this other person. You're just not quite as good at a whatever good, you're doing. Exactly, yeah. So the whole... Um, aspect of it for me is very different than um, somebody who's really invested and enjoying this game. Do you see what I'm saying? Somebody, a soul came mm -hmm. here to have mm -hmm. an experience. Right. Okay. An experience of being in a physical body and having experiences in that physical body. And they take great pleasure and it's a, a big experience they're having for 60, 70, 80 years or whatever it is. Right? Yeah, like being the captain of a giant ship. <laughs> Here we go again. Yeah. <laughs> that one, right? That, yeah, that's a giant experience. Yes. That kind of got messed up. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, it did. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't the experience we were after. No, that's true. <laughs> and um, so some of those importances have to be um, embraced in order to stay in mm -hmm. a physical body here on the planet, mm -hmm. right? So, yeah, to me, that that's what it's about. It's about that and this frequency. So when I say it's an extremely low frequency experience, what I'm saying is, is that there's a lot of energies that I experience that, are, to me, feel uncomfortable, such as importances or egoic constructs or singularity or having to um, be limited to only being um, being able to have uh, a viewpoint from inside of a physical body, right? Like an um, an objective viewpoint. <laughs> yeah, like this is right and that isn't right. Or uh, no, literally a viewpoint, the point of view, like where you're looking through, two tiny little pinpricks which are called eyes. Right. <laughs> that's what I mean. Right. So that's what I mean by extremely like low, low frequency. frequency maybe is con maybe is restricted in because the there's always I think that implicit in the word high and low frequency is the judgment, judgment of yes. high is good and low is bad. Right. And right. that's one of the things that's probably worth examining because uh, that is like the first invitation to judgment separation and separation. Yeah. So yeah. I understand that, and um, when, yeah, so I know it's it's very easy to fall into judgment the way that I'm using these words, right? Oh, Inelia thinks that all our lives are low frequency and bad, and like distracting from and distracting, her natural high frequency exactly, state. Exactly, distracting, or she's forced to be here. If it wasn't for living. us, then she could just go off and be perfect. But she has to be like involved in all yeah, this, so this low martyr frequency energy. Crap, yeah, just so she can talk to us because exactly. otherwise we won't hear her. Yeah, so Lots a lot of martyrdom going yeah, on yeah. and suffering for the sake of humanity going on. You know, woe is you. <laughs> yeah, so. It's difficult to verbalize without going into those energies, which are also low-frequency energies. The judgment, the martyrdom, all those are judgments of frequencies. Mm -hmm. And I could very easily interpret them that way, right? I mm -hmm. could very easily say, you know, I'm having to do this stuff, and but I don't. At some level... It's actually part of the orchestration or the orchestra playing the music, mm -hmm. and the human collective will manifest the individuals and situations that it needs for its to carry out its decisions. Right. Well, it's been doing it for a while, yeah. Mm -hmm. 
yeah. So, um, do I feel unhappy um, as a person having to do this? Or, you know, even the words, having to do this. I don't have to do anything. That's the whole point. We'll, well choose it. Well, you had to move from California, choice or not. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. So the, when sometimes the orchestration, the larger orchestration dictates that you cannot be in a certain location or you, you can't do a certain job or whatever. Sure, sure. As a, an orchestration of the human collective. Uh, but you came here with that knowledge. You, know, you knew that you came here for a larger orchestration of a game. And... Um, you, you could literally have stayed. I could have you stayed. You could literally have stayed and, and died. probably died. Certainly so they wouldn't have stayed because I would have died. Very uncomfortable, right? I guess. I would not have stayed because I would have died. I mean, that was clear. Okay, so. The larger orchestration trumps the singular. Oh, that's good to know. Yeah. So that's why when you create your manifestation items or whatever, you need to take into account a believable story for the larger orchestration to accept your little story true story that yeah so yeah it's 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 like that we can interpret it in many many different ways um and it's like yeah you can interpret it like martyrdom but <coughs> excuse me it's um that would be one interpretation that would from the viewpoint of a low frequency experience right because I I don't subscribe to martyrdom. I don't have that as an essential energy. So it's like it's like that, you know. As a human individual, like I said before, as a human individual, um, my life I think is extremely high frequency. I rarely subscribe to engage or participate in low frequency games mm -hmm. right i don't say never because sometimes i do the by choice though. Are, the invitations are really irresistible sometimes but by choice right right which already raises that frequency oh i choose to have an argument with this person right now mm -hmm. right <laughs> you know <laughs> by it's orchestration by sometimes perhaps that's really honestly the only way they could hear you yeah exactly so um, it's it's like that. It gets right? a bit convoluted when we we're talking about relative frequencies, anyways. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so that's you're what like I'm saying. low frequency interaction is actually high frequency for, for another person. On a normal day. Yeah, for another Sometimes, person, or yeah. even for me, you know, it's like you, yeah. yeah. So that that's what I'm. It's very difficult to describe it without, like you say, like the judgment of high frequency, low frequency, expanded awareness, shrunk awareness, and all these other items. Right. What tendency is to think that only at one frequency is that the experience that we're after and we have to stay that frequency forever yeah. in order to be right mm -hmm. and good. Right, exactly. But that's yeah. not actual, no. actually true. No, no, it isn't. It I isn't. Mean, to me, it's really important that people don't fall into the notes that are anger, fear, mm -hmm. stress, frustration, jealousies. It's important that you don't fall into those because those bring the music into a very unhealthy state and location. Well, unhealthy state and location, meaning the, the words that you might use Destructive. is... Destructive. There's a split going yes. on. Yes. And in portion of the split, they have light, dark, mixed experience. And in light, dark, mixed experience are verbiages that have anger and jealousy, fear. Those are... As well Large as love parts of the and experience, caring, empathy, the drama. Emotion. In order for yeah. it to be dramatic, it has to be like meaning, yeah. meaningful in a negative or positive way. They have to like save themselves from dying, or right. save the children from dying, or what you know, or go around murdering people, or go around and off yourself to save the world, or, or another murder make people, a big drama, yeah. telenovela, whatever. Yeah. So that that paradigm needs that frequency to even exist exactly if yeah. you want to have that experience you have to have that frequency in a space to exist mm -hmm. otherwise you couldn't have it right but the corollary to that is in the space where it's light and high frequency that bandwidth of experience doesn't come in no it's it incompatible doesn't. it's with those. incompatible right 
So every time that you indulge in a lower frequency, you are it's actually feeding feeding the light dark yeah. experience to make it bigger and stronger and sort of like keeping your foot in it. Yes, exactly. Yeah. When the experience that most or many of us came to have is the one where we move into a light reality. Exactly. An expanded awareness, light reality, right? So the light reality is right for us, yeah. but doesn't mean it's right for everyone. Exactly. Yeah. And the experience of shifting from a light dark reality, which is uh, the one we all have right now, mm -hmm. to a light reality isn't an instant snap our fingers because we don't agree to that snap our fingers reality switch because yeah, the consequence of it what are the consequences of it the consequence of it was that all of these other people who have an a light dark experience aren't Need done and do. don't want to and in order to have the one we want they have to go away <laughs> yeah. in a way that that's they, an impact that's negative that we <laughs> can say is a high frequency way to conduct our split yeah which we are dictating what the high frequency way is, which in this sense, we're just to some degree waiting them out. <laughs> like, okay, we're going to have a new frequency here. Okay. And until you're done, we're going to keep doing this. Okay. Yes. And you're going to be done when you step out of here. Yeah. And your kids too, if you've like inculcated them, because now they've chosen that too. For two or three generations to make this a very slow, easy process that doesn't appear to be mm -hmm. dramatically negative. Yeah. yeah. Which mm, some people who want a light, light paradigm are like, get on with it already. I can't take this anymore. And other mm -hmm. ones are like, well, when I've, I've heard that there's more people exiting, but I haven't actually seen it right next to me. Right. Most often because we're in a high frequency reality with <laughs> yes. high frequency people who aren't exiting. For right. the most part, yeah, yeah, it's kind of funny. It's the reality you prescri subscribing to the you is see. the one you're experiencing more and more mm -hmm. and more. And as you experience it more and more and more, the other one is less and less and less visible. It's still like channel two has the news on it, mm -hmm. and we could turn it to channel two, but we so very rarely ever do. The only way channel two news comes into our reality is through, in a sense. A hijacked high frequency channel. Yes. <laughs> like, yeah. hey, look what stuck me. Yeah. Look, don't show on channel two. <laughs> it's like, what does they do there? Look, there's a monster on it. <laughs> Remember that monster? And there's baddies and goodies. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. So, yeah, so from that perspective, right, the human life that I experience is extremely high frequency, right? It's filled with interesting days, interesting people, interesting conversations, beautiful food, <clears throat> and beautiful experiences, physical experiences. So one might think, well, why did you say that is extreme low frequency to you? Right. 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 Why that's would what, you describe that? That's what somebody that? would naturally think because mm -hmm. they would, it's like you have a perfect, beautiful life yeah, with beautiful exactly. animals, love you, a beautiful community, beautiful birthday, yeah. beautiful everything. Yeah. And right. healthy body, even getting healthy yeah, body. Healthy, yeah, healthy, yeah. Yeah, so how is that low frequency? Right. That would be the question some exactly. would ask. Exactly, yeah. So that's why I was trying to qualify it, right? Mm -hmm. I was trying to explain to you with regards to frequencies and things and music especially. To me, the the experience that I had or I have most mornings is from being everything in the universe, mm -hmm. right? And experiences that awareness and then it has to shrink shrink and shrink and shrink and I lose lose data information frequencies until it becomes one tiny little two little pink pricks that I look out of and one tiny bit of information for the planet and one tiny little I me and myself who's in Elia mm -hmm. right and to me that is a shrinking of awareness which I equate with a lowering dropping in frequency yeah dropping of frequency that's how I equate it because in your mind are in the way that we're communicating, higher frequency is expanded awareness. awareness yeah. Lower frequency is contracted Shrinking. awareness. Yes. Yeah. So we have a very contracted awareness reality experience on Earth, yes. Gaia right now. By choice. By by choice, yes. by literal choice. Yes. Literally the choice is what makes the experience. Mm -hmm. And at some point, of course, it becomes from uh, it becomes from from everything is to oh this is interesting right mm -hmm. and 
it, it's all about those frequencies. But I do like to spend time in that or reminding myself a little bit about that larger state of awareness. Well, in a lot of ways and always, the human experience choice that we're having right now includes bringing you and your expanded awareness experience into ours to, you know, expand our awareness. Yes. Right. Which right. is raise our frequency. Yes. And it makes it makes it easier if you raise your frequency, right? Right. It's kind of so like wag a lot the dog of the tail thing. Yeah. A lot of the conversations I've been having in the um, walk with me now and the monthly call there and um, in the Spanish broadcast that we do uh, on Saturdays uh, the the and the classes that we've been giving the private tuition and classes the topic is I can see it gelling into the human collective mm -hmm. right and the topic is all of us are are moving from the importance only importance of the I me and myself into the the dynamic of the importance of us, we ourselves, and I, me, and myself being equally important. And we're going from my ascension experience to our ascension experience. That's almost like my a key there. expansion of awareness to our, our expansion of awareness. And it's telling people literally when you do a study group, let's say for um, clearing your wealth lines class, mm -hmm. right? If you do a study group that are happening right now and walk with me now, if you join one of those study groups or start one and then you discuss the first 10 minutes of the class together, yep. you're literally expanding your awareness because you're hearing other people's awareness of what that means that you couldn't possibly come up with yourself. You have your own right, right viewpoint or experience <clears throat> of it. But now your experiences are the people's experiences. That is the definition of expanding your awareness. It's not hard. It's not rocket science, right? In some funny way, if you think about it, uh, one of the purposes of school is to narrow your yes ex your expanded body of awareness to a singular yes. one that's dictated. Yes. And everyone has to agree the hive mind that that's concept. the one that yeah. we all agree on. Yeah. And the other ones, the ones where you're thinking, hey, maybe um, gravity is like different than what you're saying. Those are the ones that get squished. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it's ridiculous in a way, isn't it? It's such a backwards, upside down world sometimes. Yes. But education, the education system. Not every educator. Right. Not every class, not every teacher, not every, you, every, every, every university. But by and large, the idea is to consolidate your belief, knowing, experience of reality mm -hmm. into one that we... Or, or is um, the same. Mm -hmm. It's like, repeat all of this. Repeat. The color of the water is blue. Everybody, it's blue. <laughs> repeat. <laughs> but I know when I look over there, it's green. Yeah. And where I live, it's also kind of white sometimes. Yeah. No, no, no. Water is blue. <laughs> okay, water's blue. That's basically narrowing your awareness. It right? is, yeah. Discounting your personal experience and substituting our own. Mm -hmm. And that gives you an A. Yes. Okay. So unschooling is an interesting topic that we talked about before. I haven't read a book about it. And it's a 1950s kind of philosophy, you know, with a, its own set of uh, uh, awkwardnesses <laughs> to it. So I'm not going to prescribe it or anything. But no, the whole idea true. has been an interesting idea from a very, very long time. As I was going through school... I remember coming to the awareness that I was going to school to get ready for the next grade. Yeah. And then I would be go to the next grade and I'd be all that timing in, in, in like um, primary school, grade one to five, was getting ready for um, going to middle school. And then sixth grade was specifically about getting ready for seventh grade. And then seventh, eighth, and ninth grade were to get ready for going to high school for 10th, 11th, and 12th grade. Because 12th grade was to get ready for going to college 
for what's that, 13th and 14th and 15th and 16th grade. And 16th grade was to get you ready to do master's degree, which was to get you ready to do a PhD or whatever. Mm -hmm. And I was like, but when do we get ready to do the thing that we're learning? <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, it wasn't about that. So it, well, No, it wasn't about that. It was very, very interesting. When I saw that, I was stunned. Yeah. Because I thought that was really, really weird. And then I did something really, really smart. You left school? I left school and I joined the Coast Guard. <laughs> yeah, that was... And in the Coast Guard, I had an imagination <laughs> in my head of how this was going to go, you know. I was going to, like, working on this boat, saving people in the rough water, and flipping the boat over and go through the surf, you know. Yeah. Basically surfing on a bigger bigger surfboard <laughs> made out of steel. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That was what I kind of imagined, but it turned out... The clean uh, and paint well, the, houses? Well, <laughs> the tasks and the jobs that I did, yeah, they were not that satisfactory. But the uh, experience of of entering into uh, training, mm -hmm. a school, mm -hmm. and this case it was eight weeks long of boot camp school, mm -hmm. was to get you ready. I mean, this is such an important job that you're going to be doing. You have to go to jail for eight weeks and do everything we tell you in whatever order we tell you to do. And if you even mess up a tiniest bit, eight weeks is nine weeks yeah. and ten weeks and eleven weeks. It may never, ever end. Right. So you, you... This is very important stuff we're going to be doing. Mm -hmm. So here, go, okay. Go over here. We're going to torture you for a while. If you can make it through this torture, then you can have a job here. Wow. And if you can't make it through this torture, well, we're going to torture you some more because mm. you're ours. And we'll just tell you when we're done torturing you. I was like, oh, my goodness. <laughs> so I did my torture. Oh, my goodness. Uh -huh. I did really good at it, by the way. Yeah, of course. <laughs> of course. And I graduated from my torture. And guess what my job was? It was so important. I couldn't answer the phone. You couldn't answer the phone? No, I wasn't allowed to. Oh. Because there was a long list of uh, prerequisites to answering the phone. Okay. You know, so what was okay. your job? My job was to answer the phone. But, oh. But I wasn't even qualified <laughs> to answer the phone? after eight weeks of torture to answer the damn phone. Oh, so you had to go training? I had a good training in order to answer the phone. Oh, my goodness. And once I had training to answer the phone, then I had to get training in order to mow the grass. And I had to get training in order to do the dishes. <laughs> it's like... Oh my God, you guys got this really complicated. Okay, okay, I can do this. The funny thing was is that, this is hilarious, you're going to laugh. So okay. I do eight weeks of torture, uh -huh. and then I end up at the little boat station where I can go play in the surf on the boats, and okay. I don't actually get to go on the boats. No. Okay. I'm going to work in the kitchen, uh -huh. doing the dishes and, you know, cutting the potatoes and the normal kitchen gallery duty. Uh -huh. Everybody that shows up has to do it for a month. Okay. I don't know why I had to go all this torture so just to do the dishes, you know, but hey, that that's their sense, system. Right? Yeah. I was like, can't we have people hired to do all of these jobs <laughs> so I can go out there on the boat and like make the boat go and like save people's lives? Because this seems ridiculous to me. Yeah. So you know what I got it as a, you know what I did to expand my experience? What? I got a job at the pizza restaurant next door to the Coast Guard <laughs> restaurant. So I would do food at the Coast Guard all day and then I would go to... The pizza place? The pizza place and do food also. Oh, my but goodness. But the one at the pizza place, I was a bit of a debutante. Yeah, you're very good. Well, no, it's not bad. It's just like good friends with the manager. Oh, okay. So I could do whatever I wanted. Oh, okay. So I had an expanded experience of Coast Guard <laughs> at the pizza <laughs> joint. It's like, that was how I could breathe. Yeah. Well, I worked at restaurants before, so it was like a little bit of the familiarity and uh, um bring grabbing back my own power you know yeah. it's like yeah. i will work in this restaurant and i will get paid and if i don't want to do that i won't do that and i won't go to jail for it watch right you know, it was kind me. of thing i'm taking my power back <laughs> yeah that was what it was oh interesting but it was a it was a it was a funny experience because it, it moved the needle from um going to school to get ready to go to the next grade uh -huh. to i'm going to school to get ready to do the next job right but every job was another school for another job. For another job, yeah. Oh, man. And then I'm doing this whole job to be good at riding around on the boat. And then the next job is, do you want to fix helicopters? Well, how's that related? I don't know. <laughs> do you want to do newspaper reporting mm -hmm. and take pictures? Do you want to jump in the water and swim after people and save them up in a helicopter? Mm -hmm. Do you want to drive a ship around and navigate it? Do you want to paint the boat and then have a bunch of guys listening to you? that you tell to paint the boat and what job do you want so it was like gotta go to another school <laughs> which one did you go to i went to the school where um 
the hilarious this is hilarious all right okay so the whole reason i wanted to go in the coast guard in the first place the first little draw yeah. was because it had icebreakers and i wanted to go to antarctica yes and then when i got in the coast guard and i asked the guy I said can i go to antarctica if i join the coast guard on one of these icebreakers he says, oh yes you bet you can mm -hmm. like he said not many people want to do that so you can go there easy yeah that turned out to be a lie a lie <laughs> Because not only that, did that ship's jobs never show up. The whole time I was in the Coast Guard, there was never one time that I ever had the opportunity that they would let me go there. Oh, no. I even, so I ended up, okay, well, the next best thing for me would be a small, small little boat that goes in the surf and rescues people in the surf. That'd be fine. Okay. So I got one of those, and I got there, and it turned out not to be fine. Not even a tiny bit. Oh, no. No, not, oh, no. not even a tiny bit. It's like, imagine a place populated by a whole bunch of people who mostly don't want to be there oh no and then in charge of the whole operation are people who are trapped oh no trapped by their bills <laughs> and their uh, easy life yeah yeah to continue that so they're there also oh, and my uh, goodness. only satisfaction they get is the, the major satisfaction they get is uh torturing, other torturing people. the younger people who just come <laughs> in because torture is how obviously you create good people yeah <laughs> good workers is through torturing them that's what they've learned, right? That's right, exactly. That's the um, that's the whole idea. So, my job that I picked happened to be the one that got me out of there the fastest, <laughs> and also was tolerable, which was navigating ships. Mm. I figured, well, if we're going to go around on the world on ships, I might as well be on the bridge and see what's going on. Right, right. Plus, I could go there right away because nobody seemed to want to do that job. Oh, that's strange. Yeah. yeah, everybody wanted to do fly around in a helicopter job oh. so if you wanted to do the fly around in helicopter jobs you had to, to you had to you had to um, apply for the school mm -hmm. then it was a three-year wait so you had to increase your time in the coast guard right so you had to stay where you were being tortured for three years for three years waiting for your turn and just to maybe go there, get there and maybe get there and in order to go there then you have to sign up for another four years or five years or whatever just to go to the school mm -hmm. So you better really want to do that. Yeah. So I decided to drive ships around. So I went to school and learned how to do that. I had the greatest time. The school, for some reason, the school experiences are just fantastic, you know. Mm. And I think it's the anticipation of what comes. Yeah, plus learning qualify. new things. You like learning new yeah, things. Yeah, we learned how to, I mean, I figured driving ships, we're going to learn how to drive, you know, navigate where they are on the planet. No, we're talking to each other with flags. <laughs> True. <laughs> We okay. stand up on the tippity top with his two flags, and you go, er, 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 and you move the flags around. Yeah. And you talk to the guy on the other ship without using the radio. Wow. Or use a little light blinker, blink, 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 and Morse code. Yeah. Uh -huh. So we spent a whole week at, at school learning how to do that to each other and then doing it really, really fast and really, really well. Wow. Because you have to pass the test, of course. Of course. Yeah. Anyway, at the end of all of that, I ended up on a ship doing buoys in um, um, chart in um, Chesapeake Bay. Where's that? Chesapeake Bay is by Washington, D.C. Okay. At the bottom of the river. Okay. The Potomac River goes into the Chesapeake Bay. Okay. And there's a few other rivers. Mm -hmm. Norfolk and Portsmouth. And, you know, East Coast. I had never been East Coast. So it was kind of interesting like, to see yeah, the whole different... The uh, culture and people. Everything, yeah. That was, that was pretty fun. That was a nice experience, actually. Oh, good. And what I learned in school uh -huh. pretty much mostly didn't translate to what I was doing. Oh, we didn't uh, have any. We had those flags. You never used them? Well, they were just in the little drawer for, I guess, an event of... <laughs> I, I don't, don't know, know what. <laughs> <laughs> we just had to have them. <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> we didn't have a blinker thing either. Oh, no. <laughs> so it was a lot of work to get that blinker stuff in your head, you know. And yeah. then you get there... You know, no, we like... don't use blinkers. No, <laughs> call them on the radio. <laughs> and the same thing with the little, uh, you know, you see people that are navigating these a celestial thing, a little oh, yeah, knobby thing to check the sun or whatever <clears throat> and see how far they're away mm -hmm. are. And you do a whole bunch of that and then you magically find out where you are. Uh -huh. Yeah, we use the GPS. Okay. You just push the button. <laughs> but oh, it was fun. Yeah. Whatever. It's kind of like the engine that is that. Mm -hmm. The Coast Guard, for example, or the Navy, I'm sure, Army, that's probably all the same. Yeah. That engine is maybe 40 or 50 years old. It's churning yeah. out people who are 
apparently doing what needs to be done. Yeah. <laughs> despite the, in a yeah. the change in technologies. <laughs> yeah, that everything's changed. Yeah. <laughs> They're good at the celestial navigation, but they don't need to be. But it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. They were good at being tortured for a while, learning yeah. something they po possibly cram into their brain. But I think it's more to do with making slaves, right? People who are compliant. Well, they have the hammer and the carrot yeah. down good, yeah. no question. Mm -hmm. And enough hammers. Yeah. The Some of the things that helped me through that experience were um, shutting off my brain and being a robot. Oh, drinking a lot of beer, huh? Well, that helped too. <laughs> Actually, that didn't help at all. <laughs> I can't think of any situation that actually helped, <laughs> ever, even it, once. It didn't help you become a better slave? No. Oh, man. No. What about brain dead? Did it help you become brain no, dead? It no, it just made me very uncomfortable. Oh, man. It just brought in more and more discomfort. It just made, it distracted. I guess it distracted from the torture. Yeah, there you go. That will make me better at being tortured. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, man. Yeah, you know, that's another thing that's an interesting thing to consider is when you remember things, what do you remember about them? Do you right, remember right. the great things or do you remember the horrible things or what? what is your set point for memory? Mm -hmm. And is that related to the sound? Does the sound hook you into a memory of future past or past future or a expanded sense? future, whatever, does the sound um, change the way that you're remembering something? It's possible. Yeah, well, yeah. think about it this way. Country music, you're crying, tears in your beers because your girlfriend left you and took the dog. Yeah. So when you're thinking about your girlfriend who left you, maybe, and you listen to country music, you know definitely you're going to be sad. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> <laughs> and then if you're listening to... Um, La la music, the kind that we like that's all about. I don't even know what the words mean because I don't know the words. They're, They're in a foreign chants, language and we can't yeah. figure them out. They're chants of yeah. this or that. But the place that it brings you, the memory that I have, isn't of a, oh, my girlfriend left me from whatever with the dog. I don't even, don't even have that yeah. at all. Mm -hmm. I have the memories of, uh, like you said, a future or an expanded place. Yes, right? yeah. So maybe in some ways, the sound healing is remember, remembering a place that remembering your, your divine limitation nature, and your divine nature is. Yeah. yeah, I like that. Yeah. So, not everyone experiences country music the same as I do, though. No. Probably not. So probably the same thing with music, or do you think well, it's a universal it, language? Well, country music. When you say country music, I think. Um, um, I'm going to buy me a boat <laughs> and a big truck to pull it. <laughs> and a truck to pull it. Right. And a Yeti 700 with 12 <laughs> silver bullets in it. <laughs> yeah, which I don't know what it meant. You told me it was beer. <laughs> that's, a, that's a very expensive cooler with Coors Lights. Okay. <laughs> so, yeah, you know. Yeah, or the, <clears throat> there's another one that became really famous, but I can't remember it now. Some, but I all I remember about that country song is this this cowboy boy, you know, really buff cowboy dancing around, you know, and that was it. <laughs> <laughs> just, so I it can't even remember you, the music. It, just, <laughs> it brings you to the memory of a, a cowboy, a hunk. cowboy hunk dancing around. So <laughs> yeah, so I guess that's uh, that's something to do with the sound yeah. and the sound healing. Yeah. The healing is bringing you to that expanded state of space awareness. Which is interesting because is when, less to, to us, country music brings back different memories. Even the sound, the words country music for you means, you know, oh my God, my girlfriend left me and took the dog. And to me, it's like, I'm going to get me a boat and a big truck to, and a truck to, to pull, pull it. it. <laughs> and um, yeah, a truck to pull it. And this, you know hunky kind of cowboy, cowboy boys <laughs> dancing around in the sand you know it's like yep. in the desert so it's, it's very very different isn't it totally is yeah. Yeah. yeah so music isn't necessarily the universal but the uh, memory that it can bring is probably universal to you yeah based on what you pick mm -hmm. yeah <clears throat>
Well, I guess it's not that profound, huh? It's as profound as uh, the lesson in life that we learned the other day, and I'm pretty sure it was on a, a video. What was that? If it moves and it shouldn't, use duct tape. And if it doesn't move and it should, use WD-40. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was really good. Yeah, it's profound, huh? <laughs> Very profound. <laughs> <laughs> it's awful handy advice. Yes. Oh my gosh. That's the wisdoms <laughs> that we like. <laughs> keep them simple keep and them make simple. them profound. Can make them profound. <laughs> yeah. Well, one of the things I think that we should talk about before we finish up is tapping into our expanded awareness and tapping into our... Uh, connection with Gaia mm -hmm. and hearing literally hearing visualizing and in some way like the sound healing that you're using with, or having with uh, Timothy Glenn going to that expanded awareness state to collect um, guidance that you can use in this I guess place time mm, yeah. to help Keep you, yeah, and you know, keep you on track. And I guess that's the best way is to keep you on track you on with the track. experience you came here to have. Yeah, But also, that's why I didn't say we're going to go from the I, me, and myself to us, we, and ourselves. I mm -hmm. said we're going to have the two, right? We have, mm -hmm. We're going to have the two. And I think on um, last, uh, yeah, the, this week's second hour, we're going to be going deeply into the Gaia connection, right? Right, definitely, because, uh, yeah. At the it's, end of the last important. second hour, we're gonna supposed yeah. to get a feedback on what yes. is the exact message Gaia gave you. Yeah. What yeah. in words is it, and yeah. what does it mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah, how to how to work it, and how to interpret it. I also want to let people know that um, the Insta Manifestation Workshop by Ivan's Academy is still accepting students for the next rendition of the workshop. It's very very powerful, very intense, and <laughs> requires a lot of dedication. We have a lot of staff members, facilitators, and uh, uh, material to go through. Um, but I also wanted to talk a little bit about the class that we do on the Subscribe Star. Mm. Larry and I are going to be doing a class, um, and it's going to be before the 15th. So if you haven't subscribed yet to our second hour, go to Subscribe Star, and one of the options there is for you to also join the class. Mm -hmm. The monthly class, and um, so yeah, it's it's going to be awesome, and we're going to be preparing that uh, to get into really nice um, nice tools and methods that you can use in order to step out of the low frequency stuff that may be happening in your life or around you. Um, or subscribing to those and really starting to explore our universe in that other state that you are, which is extremely expanded. Right. It's basically giving you more of the story. What story? Low frequency is contracted. <coughs> Ooh, contracted. Contracted awareness of something, anything. Let's just say, you know, bees. Bees sting you. Bees are bad. <laughs> yeah. That's very... Low frequency look at bees, but then bees pollinate flowers and bring uh, fruit life. and life into the world. And they only sting you if you harass them. Or That's because you need a healing or from you arthritis. Need, or you have then, arthritis and you yeah. need some bee stings, yeah. a little inflammation to help things move out. Yeah. Right. It's just the, the wider your expanded awareness of a thing, the higher your frequency of that thing normally. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. guess. I don't know. There she goes. I think we're done. <laughs> Dogs are going nuts. Dogs are going nuts. The music is playing. Our second hour is coming up. Yes. And we're going to talk about cool stuff. Cool, cool, cool stuff. And have class. Yes. So if you haven't got a second hour, get Go it. Go ahead and do it. If you don't want to do a second hour, just do Walk With Me Now and it comes with it. Yes, it does. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Love you, honey. Love you too, darling. <laughs>